Well, it's morning for me. I'm not sure what time you're watching this at. I want to apologize for kind of leaving you hanging. Ah, I got to set a timer. For leaving you hanging because um, I didn't get to read on Friday. I ran out of time completely, but I kind of left you hanging on a cliffhanger. So where we were at is that Bob was telling Ivan, I have to go save my sister and I'm going to do it and I don't care who says yes or no. Remember, they're um, walking kind of through the street and it's this elephant, this gorilla and all the animals and there's a ton of ton of water coming and the police are like, should we shoot them? Should we not? One wants to, one doesn't. Bob's like, you guys stay here. Don't move. And I'm going to go save my sister. And I think we're going to finish the book in the next couple days. So I'm going to go back to, um, it's page 291, and it's lightning and fireworks. So Bob is leaving. See, he says, well, uh, I leap into the air, into the vast unknown, just like Kimu did. Well, maybe not quite so elegantly, but I do my best. So Bob's going to save Boss. Lightning and fireworks. It isn't far to the bridge, but far is relative when the wind is blowing down houses like the big bad wolf. So he's as far as relative, which means like far is different now because the wind is blowing crazy. So even though it's close by, it's still super hard to get there. I watch a stop sign fly past. I navigate around trees scattered like popsicle sticks. I keep an eye out for gators and pythons. Lightning strikes a tree. I brace for the thunder. It shakes the earth, the air, my teeth, my bones. A branch falls on a power line. Sparks dance like fireworks. I hate fireworks. I move with more care after that. I know enough to stay away from downed power lines thanks to the weather channel and storm chasers. So Bob has learned a lot from watching TV. Man, I love TV. I'd give anything to be watching it from my nice cozy bed right about now. Good thing I know where the bridge is. My swollen nose throbs. What's the point in owning a top of the line sniffer if it's not working right? When I pass a bird's nest on the ground, I offer to help the owner, a jay. She swears at me. At least I think she does. I hear nuts and some other interesting words. I tend to forget that in some circles, dogs are considered predators. So the jay did not want his help, right? She's yelling at him. I wonder how Kimu and the other escapes are doing, the other escapees are doing. One thing I know for sure, having been on the inside and the outside, is that way too much of the world ain't made for wild animals. How would a meerkat cross a highway? How would a panther face down a city block? How would a wolf survive an encounter with a gun? For that matter, who do I think I am playing hero? Nutwit was right. I'm soft. I'm slow. I'm not a street dog anymore. I'm a pampered, lazy pooch. So something, a trait Bob always has is he kind of doubts himself. And now as he's going to save his sister, he's still saying, Nutwig's right, I'm not that good. But do you guys believe what he thinks about himself or is he showed us different? I hear the rush of water, a different sound from the pouring rain. And out of nowhere, there it is, the creek. Boss mentioned that the car was near the bridge, but when I get close, I remember what the officer at the shelter said. The bridge had collapsed, and then I see it. So he's at this place. He's looking for Boss, but Boss was looking for a car that she had left her baby puppy in. So they're all kind of chasing each other. A little car, round-topped, floating, caught in a dislodged tree at the edge of the Roaring Creek, not far from the crumbled remains of the bridge. And on top of that car, even though it's completely impossible, is a puppy waiting. And all I can think is, that dog is a nincompoop. And here's the puppy. So this is Boss's baby right here. And Boss just had this feeling that she had to go back for him. But now Bob found the puppy. Another bridge. The creek is filled with pieces of trees, 
boards, trash cans, plastic chairs, everything you can imagine. It's moving way too fast for me to try and cross. I'm gonna go back to the picture because it gives us a good idea. Here's the car and here's the tiny puppy, but look how high the water is. So Bob isn't very big either, and the water's, I mean, almost halfway up the car, right? So that, sh that gives you a picture in your head of how high the water is. I stare at the far side of the creek at the collapsed bridge. I really wish I hadn't seen that puppy. I know there's another way to cross the creek of sorts downstream a bit. An old pedestrian bridge made of wood and metal and rope. No one uses it anymore. No one with any sense. When I reach it, the little bridge is swaying like a cradle. It's blocked off by a rusty metal gate to keep people from using it. But I can easily squeeze through the bars. I run halfway across, lose my footing, and run some more. Gulp. What am I? doing a fresh gust pushes the bridge with such force that i slip half my body is dangling off the edge i dig my claws into the wet wooden slate and oh am i glad my nails are long and sharp because i fight off sarah's flippers whenever i can <laughs> pulling 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 man i wish i hadn't eaten so much cheese over the years and then oh, one last effort and I'm back on the bridge. The bridge is here and he's hanging on the bridge, but his claws are sharp because he wouldn't let anyone cut him, so he's pulling himself up. He made it back up, luckily. It feels so good, so good to return to that little stretch of swinging slats. I want to live, really I do. I don't care about the puppy anymore. I just don't want to die this way. Not like this. The fear's in my throat. My heart, my gut, I've got to get off this rickety bridge, get back to Ivan and Ruby, back to my wonderful Bob-smelling bed. I'm not a hero, never have been, never will be. I can't live with that, because at least I'll be, well, sorry. It says, I can live with that, because at least I'll be alive. So now he's thinking, I don't want to help this dog, I just want to live. I turn, moving snail slow because the stupid bridge just won't stay put, crawling on my belly so I won't lose my footing again. Almost to the end, I glance back like a fool. Do you guys think he's going to give up on this puppy? He says, I glance back. What do you think he saw? Just in time to see the car with the puppy lurch loose from its uh, mooring in the tree, swirling into the middle of the creek like a toy boat in a bathtub. The puppy isn't howling or anything. He's just lying as on his belly, same as me, waiting. What a nincompoop, I think yet again. And I'm honestly not sure whether I mean him or me. Hero. I will not lie. I'm not thinking, oh, yay, now I get to be a hero. Nope. I'm thinking, you have got to be kidding me. Just a few more seconds and I would have been out of here. I may or may not use a few other choice words, way worse than anything that Jay came up with. Then I run back to the middle of the bridge and wait a split second, maybe two, maybe three, and I jump. Cartoons. And I ain't proud of this, but halfway down, I remember, so he's jumping across, I remember that I really, really, really don't like riding in cars. I'm sort of dog paddling in the air, thinking I can slow things down, maybe even reverse directions like Wile E. Coyote in those old cartoons. Cartoons are ridiculous for a reason. Not a movie. So, in a movie, I'd land all graceful and tough and I'd grab that little guy. But this isn't a movie. I kind of land on top of him. Legs laid like a bug on a windshield. Not enough to smush him, but definitely enough to annoy him. The car spins, dips, rights itself. Hi, I say, I'm your Uncle Bob. If you're my uncle, why are you trying to kill me? He asks. Pup has a mouth on him for being so tiny. I'm saving you, dude. I grab his scruff with my teeth. Ouch, he says. The car seesaws. The car's doing this. I scramble, clawing at the slick skin of the roof, 
My nails make a horrible scraping sound. Ugh, so his nails are scratching against the middle of the car. It's like trying to hug a whale. Can you swim? I ask out of the side of my mouth. It's hard to talk with a puppy between your teeth. So he's like this. Can you swim? No, can you? Yes, but I suspect the degree of difficulty will go up considerably, considerably with a puppy in my mouth. There's our timer. Let me finish this chapter. Yes, but I, oh, the car lists, the car lists, recovers, loops along like a jackrabbit in the tall grass. My claws make tracks in the paint. How'd you get on top of the car? I ask. Wasn't easy. Branch broke through one of the windows. I climbed out that way. Impressive. By the way, says the puppy, I think we may be sinking. No kidding, Sherlock. I don't mean to sound unkind. I'm a bit stressed. I don't have a name, actually. <laughs> so he called, he said, no kidding, Sherlock, which is something you say when you're sarcastic, but the puppy thinks that's his name. I don't have a name, actually. How about Rowdy, I suggest. I hear it's available. Sure, what the heck? So what's your plan? You tell me, I say. What do you think was going to happen? I figured someone would come along and save me. Some human, maybe. Dog's best friend, I say. If you say so. Another lurch and we're going down. Hang on, pup, I say. Man's best friend is going to save you instead. Okay, guys, we probably have one more session, maybe two. Have a good day, everybody. It's getting good.